everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited about today's video because we're going to be working on a project together. I'm going to be showing you how to take a design that you've made in Figma and convert it into a working website using Webflow. I've got some tips for you and some suggestions on like a workflow you should follow to make this process really streamlined and easy. So if that sounds good to you, then let's get right into it. So this right here is the design that I've made in Figma. It's a landing page for the community that we run as part of our podcast, Design Life. So it's just kind of like a sales page, tells you a bit about what to expect in the community. There's some reviews, there's the ability to sign up, obviously. So this is what we're gonna be building out in Webflow. And uh, the first thing to actually note, and the first tip that I have for you, how to start this workflow off in the right place, is that if I turn on the layout here in Figma, you can see I've set up a 12 column grid and this grid is 940 pixels wide because that is the standard width of a container in Webflow and also Webflow uses a standard 12 column grid. So if I'm working to that in my design, it's gonna be much easier for me to then take what I've designed and build it out in Webflow. So it's a really good idea to start with that and if you're interested in my layout grid settings, then this is what I've got here so you can just copy that. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do before I dive into Webflow and start building is just kind of evaluate my design. Um, websites are all built out of blocks, right? Blocks stacked on top of each other, styled different ways, arranged in certain ways, but it's pretty much all blocks. And even though you're not writing code by hand when you're using Webflow, you are still coding. So things still function the same way. So I wanna get an understanding of the different blocks that make up my site because that's like the sections that I'll work in when I get into Webflow. So up the top here, you can see I've got this white section that's the intro. This gray one is like some content. I've got this badge here that kind of overlaps these sections. So I'll be using some negative margin to push that up and, and take it out of the section that it kind of belongs in. Um, and then again, happening here with this screenshot, these reviews here take up six columns each. Um, all of my text kind of takes up eight columns here sitting in the middle with a two column block on either side. These points, four columns each, that's good to keep in mind. Just going through, scanning your design, seeing how it fits to the grid is gonna help you when it comes to building in Webflow. So with that said, let's dive into Webflow and get started. This is the Design Life website in Webflow. It's where we house all of our episodes. Um, it's where we have a current landing page for our community, but it is kind of bare bones. So that's why I decided to design a new one. So let's just start fresh with a new page. All right, so here's our blank canvas. And like I said, the first thing I'm gonna do is add that introduction section. So I'm gonna drag in a section from the layout. Then I'm gonna add a container, which is that 940 pixels wide that I was talking about. Um, the next thing, as you can see in my design, and as is pretty common in every website, is a navigation up the top. Now, if you've used Figma before, you'll probably know about components, which is where you design something once, um, you save it as a component, and then you can drop it on all of your artboards. If you need to make a change to it, you just change it in that one place and it'll spread those changes out. So I've got this navigation in Figma saved as a component. And that makes it a really great candidate for a symbol in Webflow, which works pretty much the same way. You um, make it once, save it as a symbol, and then drop it on all the pages that you need. If you need to make an update to it, just change it in the symbol and it'll spread those changes out. So if I go to my add tab and change to symbols, you'll see we actually already have our navigation set up. So I'm just gonna drop that in. But it is really easy to make a symbol in Webflow. Let me just show you as an example. I'm just gonna drop in this example navigation. Just like in Figma, you're gonna right click and create component. In Webflow, you're gonna right click and create a symbol. And now this guy, this test navigation is saved for me whenever I want to drop it onto another page. But to be honest, I don't because we already have a navigation. So let's keep moving. Back to the design, like I was talking about with columns, I've arranged this H1 over kind of eight columns because if I spread it out right to the edge, then I feel like my text doesn't break how I want it. So eight columns is nice. So I'm gonna come in here and add some columns in Webflow and then I can adjust these column widths just by dragging over here. So. My columns are eight with two either side. That's what we're gonna do. Like I said before, when you're working in Webflow, you are actually coding. So for example, this left-hand side here where I'm dragging in elements to my page, that's like adding HTML. 
And then over here, I can come and change the style of those elements. I can change the font, the colors, borders, you know, whatever. And this is kind of like adding the CSS. Just like with code as well, you add classes in Webflow, which means that you can reuse them on different elements. So we already have an H1 class in our site, but it's a lot smaller than the one that I've used on this page here, as you can see. So instead I'm going to make a class called H1 large, and then I'm gonna go about styling. The font that we're using on our site is called Assistant, so let me set that. Um, just like in Figma, you can easily use Google Fonts, it already comes built into the software. That happens in Webflow too, so it's really easy for me to find the Google Font that I want added to my site. So far, so good, but as you can see, these images are aligned kind of to the top of um, the column there and I want them to sit more in the center of the heading. So to do that I'm going to use Flexbox, I'm going to apply it to the column here and if I set the flex layout to align center just with this button then they're going to move down. Moving on to the next section. This one's going to have a gray background so I'm just going to call it section gray. Another tip for keeping things streamlined between your Figma file and your Webflow website build is with colors. So if I come in Figma, you can see all of my document colors here are the ones that I use throughout my page and I could be saving them to global colors as well. In Webflow, I can put in a color value and then save it as a swatch. I'm gonna call it gray. That way I don't have to go pasting in values all the time and all of the colors that I use can be saved here for me. So I'm just gonna add my purple to that as well. Now, obviously my first line here is sitting a little bit too close to the top of this gray box. It doesn't quite look like my design does. A handy way to measure things in Figma is to hold down the option key when you've got your object selected and then you just hover on the object you want to measure it to. And as you can see here, it tells me there is 88 pixels between this and the top of the gray section. So that tells me how much margin or padding I should add in Webflow. As you can see here, I can just drag to add um, padding. But if I hold down the option key and drag, then it'll adjust the top and the bottom at the same time, which is very handy. Now, obviously my design, I have the byline sitting next to the image. So when I put in a block, it automatically is gonna stack on one on top of the other. So I need to adjust the settings for that. Using flex is a really good way to do this. It's easy to remember, because think of flex as like more flexible and you have more options if you use it. So uh, I'm going to set this block that's containing both the image and the byline. I'm gonna set that to flex. And because the layout is set to horizontal, that means it'll arrange all the items in the block on a horizontal line. Um, which is exactly what I want. And I'm just gonna click center and that'll drop the byline and Twitter handle in line with the image. Then of course, I'm gonna want to add just a bit of margin onto the image here. So let's come in and do that. As you might notice in my design, if I turn the guides on, this white block here actually extends past this column that I had it in. Um, stands, it stands out about 20 pixels. So I need to make that overlap in here in Webflow too. So to do that, I'm gonna set a negative margin. Again, if I hold the option key, it's gonna do the left and the right at the same time. So let's do that and drag it out about 20 pixels. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. With this one here, I'm gonna put all of this, cause again, we like to think in blocks and, and what you're gonna make. So let me just get an outline here. I'm gonna put all of this here together in a block. And then just like I extended the sides of that testimonial card out, I'm gonna do that here with a negative margin to make it move up into the next section a little bit. Earlier on, on a different block, I made a class called center to just like align everything. So I can just use that again and it'll pop this image into the middle. Remember when I saved my purple in my color picker? It's coming in handy now. <laughs> Something I find really good to do as I'm looking between my design and the Webflow file, like figuring out what sizes to make things, that sort of stuff. 
uh, is come into the code tab in Figma. So this tells me, okay, my font size is 17. It's got a line height of 22 pixels. Um, tells them the font family, although I already knew that. Um, instead of me figuring out, okay, exactly what do I need to know to style this one line of text in the code view, it tells me exactly that. So then I can come into Webflow and make sure that I set the size of this to be the same as the one over there. So that's that block done. And for these things here, I'm gonna do two rows, row one, row two of four, four columns each. So three columns of four. So my next challenge with this is going to be all these icons here, getting them aligned uh, to the left of the box with the text right next to them. And I kind of want the icons sitting, I mean the text sitting in the middle uh, vertically of the icon. And if you remember, I did something similar for up here where I used that flex box. So I think I might do the same thing here. I'm going to add a div. I'm gonna take this and put it inside it. And the handy thing in Webflow is it obeys your regular keyboard commands. So I can just go Command X and then Command V and it'll paste it inside that div block. Um, what did I call it up here? Flex div, okay. So because I made that a class, I can just reuse it down here for this one as well. This bit here is just gonna be a bunch of copying and pasting from Figma, so excuse me while I just go get that done in a snap. There we go, all done. Um, I was able to just duplicate my heading, the icon and the, the paragraph in these three columns, and then I was able to duplicate that whole row um, and replace the text for the next one. Um, all right, so underneath that, we have another piece of text. So for this, this is the same size as the text that I used up there. So I'm just gonna come in and copy paste this in here, cause why not? See how I've got this little line up here in my design just as a, a nice little divider. Um, it's really too small for me to bother with exporting that as an image that's unnecessary load time. So what I'm gonna do instead is bring in a div and I put it at the top of this column. And how wide is this guy in Figma? It's about 20 pixels wide, okay. so. I'm gonna make this div, I'm gonna call it divider line. It's gonna be 20 pixels wide and centering stuff in CSS when you're coding by hand always feels like such a problem, but in Webflow, I'm just gonna click here, this handy button that says center element and it will go in the middle for me. I'm gonna add some margin to it. Just one pixel padding. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically fill in this div um, and I will have drawn a shape. So I'm gonna make the background purple. Um, there we go. Now we have a little purple line. As you can see in my design, um, my screenshot has this drop shadow to it. And this is where I find the code part really comes in handy to know what settings I need to apply in Webflow to make this drop shadow. So it's got 14 pixel radius, it's not offset at all, and it's like 0.25 in opacity. Then I come into the shadows tab. i um, just gonna add a drop shadow. So there was no distance and it was a 14 pixel blur. And my color was really low opacity. So let's shrink that down a lot. There is my image with a drop shadow. Okay, I'm just gonna add in this next gray section and then I'm gonna show you how I do this overlapping thing. Okay, so I want this screenshot here to overlap with the gray and I want this here to overlap with the gray at the top. So we put all of this inside a div and I'm just gonna call it overlap top and then we're gonna add a negative margin. So just dragging down on here and moving it up until I feel like it looks good basically. That looks pretty good. Um, and then this one here at the bottom, I'm gonna add a overlap bottom to it. And actually I'm gonna take off the padding from this white section. So that way it's already sitting at the bottom. And then some negative margin to drag it over. Now let's get on with filling out that gray section. Something I'm gonna need to do is add a lot of padding to the top of this gray section, just so um, my content doesn't hide behind the image. Basically just extends the space that you have at the top of the section to allow for anything that you might have overlapping. These here are, even though they're smaller than my one 
that I've used up the top here. They're the same style really, uh, and this white block is just going to go to the full width of whatever column it's in. So what I should be able to do is just come here and copy all of this and paste it in here. Yep, that worked. But remember, because I put that overlapping on the sides of it, I don't want that in this one. So I'm just going to go and take that off. Right, so for this here, I think I'm going to start with a div block because I mean, it already has a border around it, so it is obviously a block. Let's call this pricing. And it's going to have a border. So this is kind of in two columns, as you can see, this takes up kind of four and then this takes up another four. So what I could do is make it uh, four columns with like two width, four width, four width, two width. But what I think I'm going to do is actually nest some columns within columns, if that makes sense. Uh, just because I know it's going to help me when I come to making this responsive. So let's start with editing this to be our standard eight with two on either side. Um, and then within this, I'm going to put another column and this is just six and six. That's right. Cool. off uh, I'm gonna come back to another symbol and add in our footer There's a component in Figma and it is a symbol here in Webflow so I'm just gonna grab that and drop it in to the container boom there we have it there is a rough approximation of our page and the next thing to pay attention to is the responsive layout so if I preview it here this is what my page is looking like looks pretty much the same as my design there might be a couple of things to fix up but it's looking pretty good um, I can preview it at these different device sizes. <clears throat> Obviously there is a problem with our symbol there. <laughs> Navigation shouldn't be doing that, but yeah, for the most part, this shrinks and looks pretty good just like on its own. Because I was using the column element, they all resize as the browser shrinks. And as you'll see when I get to the mobile device, columns all just stack one after another. So these things here, which were three in a row, now they're in a list of six, which is working great. So there's only a few things to touch up and this page will be production ready. But I'm gonna end this video here because I know it's gotten really long. Um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing this and I hope that it was useful for you to see my workflow, taking something from Figma to building it in Webflow. I did a video recently about why I switched from using sketched design websites to using Figma. And a lot of people ask questions in there about how you make that into a functioning site. So yes, I hope this was useful. The reason it isn't a thing where you just uh, like upload the Figma file and automatically makes it a website is because Webflow makes really good, like clean code. In fact, I can come in here and show you that all that clicking around I was doing was actually making just like a good looking HTML. And unfortunately that is not the case with most code building tools, which is what makes Webflow different for me. Um, and it's also not usually the case with tools where you just upload a file and it makes the design automatically. Um, this way you're getting a good functioning website. It's not going to slow the site down or anything like that. Um, and it's good clean code that you've written. All in all, building this page out took me about two hours, and, but I was also stopping to charge my battery through the middle of this. So as you can see, pretty easy to get a website up and functioning. All I have to do on this literally is click publish and it'll go out and be a part of our site. So I'm gonna make those last few tidy ups and get that out so you can take a look at it. If you like what you saw and you wanna dive in and try out Webflow for yourself, then you can do that. There's a link on the screen right now, also in the description. It's free to just dive in and start having a play with a project. So definitely check it out and see what you can create. If you've got questions for me, if anything wasn't clear on what I went through, I know I like sped up some parts just to try and make the video shorter. So please feel free to ask questions down below in the comments. I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.